Hello everyone, welcome to um, our second video in section 2 of um, sequence and series. Now in this um, video what we are going to be looking at is an example on a um, sequence, okay? Not on a particular type of sequence, we are just trying to pick some random example and work on. Now before we go into the example, we need to put some things in place. first. We we'll talk about the notation. Now, for the fact that we want to look at the notation, we have to, we need a formal definition for sequence. Okay, the last time I told us that the sequence is simply um, items that are arranged orderly. But when it comes to mathematical definition, we have a sequence that it is a function. Every sequence is a function. So they define the sequence as a function whose domain is a set of natural numbers that we call a sequence for that reason you should know that all sequences are functions now for the fact that it's a function according to the definition we have natural numbers natural numbers actually starts from one so we are looking at one two three that means the possible input we have for a sequence must be um, a number between one and infinity okay so that means any value that is large so since the domain is infinite it simply means sequences are meant to be infinite collection of items so they are always infinite the same thing happens to series series are infinite when you're trying to take the sum of just the first few terms two or three terms that's where we call them partial sum we'll come to that later okay now Based on that, we have this notation for sequence. The notation we use is that we have a n, n starting from the n being an element of natural number, which means n starts from one. If you don't use notation, you can also have it this way, that it is a n n from one down to infinity. Okay, now don't mind the fact that I'm using a here. In place of a, you can go ahead and use anything you want. Okay, as we proceed um, in the upcoming video, you're going to see what I mean. So the a n we have here is what you call the n stem. That's the general formula you use to represent a sequence. It's called the n stem. So let's look at an example. For example, we have two n square minus one, where n um, starts from one. So this is actually n starting from one. Okay, there's meant to be infinity here, or I would have said n is an element of natural number so take note n starts from 1 to infinity that's what I meant here so that's a mistake so I can just put that here so n starts from 1 down to infinity okay, put it that way. now in this sequence the nth term we have is 2n squared minus 1 so you can see here I'm not using a n so I'm using t n so t n is taking the place of a sub n that's the concept. So I'm using Cn to take the place of A sub n. Okay? Now, if you're asked to find the first term, all you're meant to do is in the place of n, you put 1. So that's going to give you something like this. Anyway, I see n, you put 1, you simplify that, your result becomes 1. In this case, that's a coincidence. If you want to find the, third th the fourth term, in place of n, you put 4. So 4 squared will give us 16. 16 times 2 is 32, 32 minus 1, that will give us 31. Okay, but what if you want to find the term in the 3n position? So the 3n stem. So this simply means in the place of n, we are still going to put 3n. Okay, we are going to put 3n in place of n. So doing that, putting 3n in place of n, this is what you have. And if you square this, that will give you 9. N, that will give us N squared. So you have something like this. Now you multiply 2 times this. That will give us 18. So this becomes 18 N squared minus 1. So that's it, guys, about how you can evaluate a particular sequence to get any possible term. You could be given different kinds of questions to work on. Okay, so this is it for this video. Okay, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.